So we had to wait a full week before this character was like fully released. And as you can see, there is a lot going with this serpent. Attribute changes literally three different times, man, earth, and star. Alignments change twice. Gender changes twice. And all different traits based off Ascension. This character has so much going on for it. If you're a Type Moon fan uh, from more than Fate Go, probably remember these two. Maybe. I don't know. Uh, they showed up in Carnival Phantasm. I do remember them. I do remember seeing them there, but I didn't know they were like actual. Like, I didn't know what they were from because Carnival, Carnival Phantasm was all Type Moon stuff. Um, but yeah, designs look cool. Let us get started. Azumi no Isora, uh, Hibi no Hib Hibiki, uh, and Katsuragi Chikage. Um, there is so much fucking lore to this. Um, so if you didn't know, in Fate, there are no dead apostle ancestors, which are like supposed to be like high vampires. These characters come from a world where they are. And to put it into context, in those worlds, Zelrich is a dead apostle ancestor and fate, he's just immortal. So you can already see the fucking headache this is going to bring because Arquid exists in all the timelines. She's, there are just no dead apostle ancestors. It's like more she didn't wake up. Um, at least that's my interpretation of it. Uh, so yeah, if you, if you're not like a super huge fan of type moon, don't think about it too hard. Just, just don't, you're going to save yourself the headache. Um, and also when I saw this character, I, I thought they were single target. I didn't even realize they were AOE and now I've seen what they can do and like originally I was disappointed, but now I'm like, ooh, ooh nice. All right, base attack 12.2K. Doesn't change with Ascension. Can't expect that from every character. Uh, this is a good number for a five star, like 700 above the average. So like hitting overkill is not gonna be an issue, especially when she has as many hits as she does. Uh, hitting overkill, like in the first few hits is massively more important for lower hit MPs, but that doesn't mean high hits don't want it too. It's like on both extremes, they both want to hit overkill as soon as possible. Um, yeah, so you want this number as high as possible for your looping because it means you'll get more refund and this quick servant will start looking like an arts. If she kills in the first like two hits, you're going to start looking at arts. Uh, not the highest arts refund, but well above 50 hp it's a lot lower i wouldn't worry too much about it this character is much more focused on farming or the uh multi-core they definitely can do single core but is absolutely no slouch in multi-core double quick double buster definitely works with ruler scotty uh i am <laughs> Oh, like I've seen so much good stuff about this character, but I just don't have the luck. Like this is this character is coming at a terrible time for me because I burned so much uh, sand quartz on trying to get another Draco on both accounts. It is what it is. I'll, I'll pay for my sins later. Um, but yeah, this is a character I actually did really want. Um, and yeah, especially like if you've seen this 90 plus plus. This might be the first time like you're actually pulling a DPS off your friends list for how much easier she will make the node for you. But yeah, these are really good kick counts 0.5, uh, 5%. Uh, we are looking at Daiko Koten refund. Very, very like this is a similar looping profile to Daiko Koten. Uh, they both have like this 0.55 and uh, MP gain quick up uh i'm not sure about the charge per turn but if you've used that coco 10 it's similar refund 
except now you're able to now you get super effective on casters and writers which means you get even better refund like daiko koten loops i believe like 70 percent against assassins as a quick unit from black rail so <laughs> i like i've seen some nutty loops with this servant looping like well above 70. um yeah let's move on to the skills 20 percent quick 20 percent buster 40% MP gen, two attacks, three turns. On paper, this doesn't look that good, but this is all party. This is all party. So you're buffing up your single target DPS while you do multi-core, especially for this 90 plus plus that has the first enemy being 300,000, second wave is 60,000, and then the final wave 777,000. And that's a foreigner. You are not a, like Buster Farming is not going to be able to deal with that node well. It had like try with Tiamat, and I'm lacking in so much damage. So you're really, really going to want like this is the kit for multi core. It's nice. These are pa like these are the uh, like you shouldn't need help with arts because you have Castoria. Like you don't need um dps's that can buff the party because Castor castoria pretty much does that by herself so having this on a dps for quick when ruler scotty is also buffing aoe it's just really really nice and it will help you do all your farming or all your multi-core needs second skill again playing into the multi-core 30 percent battery for herself AOE battery 20% for the party. This does include herself. This is not uh, an exclusionary buff. This is like pretty much Taiko Bow with extra max HP for the party. So a little bit more tanky. Again, Scott, Ruler Scotty is not known for providing defense. Her best defense is making sure you blow up whatever you're fighting. But he's nice. He's nice. Third skill. This is what we could not see until now. Or not see. We couldn't use this until now. We had to wait till the event was literally over before we were able to have this in the farming videos. Like, if you look at the farming videos, he was looping ridiculous numbers at level 70. Level 70. That is at least 2,000, 3,000 off this number here. So she was at the level of four stars and she was looping like that now she'll be at her max attack i'd even bring her up to level 100 just imagine how well she'll be looping she gives herself water side which enables her mp mp damage three turns for the party more multi-core 20 percent on attack uh buff three times three turns Every time you hit them with a quick card, including the MP, inflict defense down. Riku has this. Except hers is not hit-based, right? I'm pretty sure Riku's isn't hit-based. It's just three turns. So Riku can spam the defense down a lot more. But that is also Riku, and that's kind of what she all she does. Uh, second one. Crit up. When you use buster cards these like this is still technically party wide because defense down everyone does more damage this is more selfish and it's like a really small thing like this honestly this could have been like 20 and i don't think people would have had an issue with it like it wouldn't have been too strong just because like 10 percent, like 30 percent crit up max is kind of team uh and isn't something you'd actually I'm not going to say you wouldn't get it in practice. It's just you only have two buster cards. So that's where the issue lies. You, you're going to have to re-roll your cards. And not only that, you're going to have to get three buster cards in three turns when she only has two. So if you do this on turn one, there unless someone dies, there's no way you can actually get the full effect of this. Well, this, you have the MP, you can easily stack this up. Uh, but if you have Summer BB, it, I, I mean, it's a non-issue at that point. 
because you just have every card you need if you, as long as you lock it. All right, passive skills. Uh, buff removal resistance 10% and debuff resistance 10% locked in. 8% crit damage, 5% crit damage for the party, divinity, and 300 damage taken reduction. And last one, which is what people were really waiting to see with or looping uh, for consistency sake. You get five stars per turn and five gauge while you're on water side battlefield. She gives herself water side battlefield. This is an issue that um, Summer Melison, that that one kind of makes a lot more sense why she would have a restriction like that. She is a summer servant. While uh, Andromeda, I'm going to keep bringing it up her event, like Chocolate River, and she didn't get water side. Ain't that some shit? Um, uh, yeah, good looking passives. Uh, appends, mana loading just for ease of use. However, because she is quick, uh, the 30% to start is probably going to be overfilled by a Scotty. So just be aware of that. Like if you're, if you think that would be more of an issue, uh, maybe go extra attack, but I still think, I always think, um, mana loading should be picked first just because at the start of an event, you don't have the MOB. If you have mana loading, you basically have MOB. So it kind of doesn't matter if you're overcharging. It's, it's more of a problem. If you're uh, starting from zero, then if you're starting from 50. Because if you're starting from 50 and then you have this, you're still only popping one battery. You're not popping two like you would have to do if you were starting from zero. All right, uh, MP. Again, I first saw this and I thought that they were single target. I'm like, oh shit, nice. Single target Taiko bow? Hell yeah. And then I find out they're um, AOE. I'm like, oh, another AOE quick unit. And then I see what their looping is like. And I'm like, oh, another AOE quick unit. Uh, yes, eight hits, which again is why I uh, brought up Daiko Kuten. Uh, there are also eight hits. Uh, if you're on water side, which she make, makes herself, you get 20% MP gen that 10% more than what Daiko has. So immediately better looping. Removes all enemies defensive buffs. Okay. Power mod against chaotic. And then quick and buster up 10%. Like these are low values, but if you add it in with the first skill, it brings it up to 30, which again makes sense why these are lo like a they're aoe and b like why they're only at 20 because she really has 30 and then if you're running with ruler scotty like you have an extra 30 so it, like i know like you had what you had like at, at a certain point diminishing returns on buff investment so the this being 10 percent, it's low but it's not the biggest deal but my god have i am i impressed with this servant i really wish i actually was able to get her i need i need to stop on jp right now because it's getting too close to the anniversary and i'm like actually burning quartz like crazy like i'm not saving up like i usually do uh such uh ascension mats these aren't hard as long as you play the game and do events like you'll have these mats to ascender caster and berserkers same for the skills just do a lotto and you'll have it uh seven and eight seashells magatamas eggs and comet shards this honestly is not the worst but eight is it's a pain point for me at this current point of time across all my accounts because i'm just lacking eggs and comet shards on CE doubling no no this isn't even doubling this is tripling down this is tripling down on multi-core uh AoE quick AoE buster and another MP gen that is actually wild 
And if I keep bringing this up, if they make it so you can use Bonzi's along with another CE, like this is this is significant numbers for a looper. Like having like actually having technically 80 50 percent MP Gen in their own kick at kit as a quick unit, that's not normal. Not not for quick. This is closer to what Arts deals with. This is truly like the kind like the numbers you'd see in an arts team because Castor gives uh 30 each and like any other supports are gonna ramp that up even more. So this character is just they're not doing anything super crazy. Like it's not they're like hitting Ungabunga damage, they're not stun locking them repeatedly on a super spammable MP. But this is farming on a super spammable MP. Uh, I do not think this unit is going to be looping one enemy waves that well. This is still a quick unit. You have to be aware of that. But again, that is what multi-core is for. And with her looping numbers, you can probably loop two enemies and get around 50. Uh, especially with this slow floor here. And depending on what other units are in your team. Overall, like this was, this was a fucking bold statement to release a character like this right after Draco, right before anniversary and right before summer. Like this is how they keep up hype and like sales numbers and don't have like dead months. It's like, especially for this. So I think Type Moon is like, we're not Type Moon. FGO is actually going to have like five months straight of like really good sales um because june draco uh july uh hibiki and Ch uh chicago august wait i'm a no i'm boofing four months um july the servant uh august is going to be anniversary and summer and then september if i had to guess it would be 30 million downloads and just keep the hype going as like new games keep coming out. FGO is still up like one of the top sellers, despite how dated it is compared to newer games. They know how to release servants. They just do. All right. I will see you guys in the next one. Peace. Thank you for making it to the end of this video. If you enjoyed, drop a like or sub. Hope to see you in the next one. Peace.